What's going on y'all, check me out here and I got a little bit of a different video for you today. Pretty much what I'm trying to do right now, and this is all really gonna be dependent upon your interest in this. Right now I have one of my friends here, Kashe. What's up y'all? She's starting a YouTube channel, which we're gonna be talking about, but I thought it'd be kind of a good idea to make, instead of topic videos about how to start a YouTube channel, I thought it'd be kind of cool, interesting, and informative to actually document someone's journey as well as answer her questions as she has them and also grab questions from all of you in the comment section. So kind of have like an ongoing series where it's like a discussion of us kind of talking about all that is involved in starting a YouTube channel. I don't have all the answers. I don't know everything. I'm not trying to say that I do, but if you like what I've done thus far and you're kind of curious some of the steps that I've taken and things that I've learned along the way, then I feel like this would be a good place to have that discussion. So. Kashe, you have been sitting here so patiently. <laughs> Can you please tell the viewers a little bit about who you are on YouTube? Um, so my name is Kashe, known as Everyday Kashe here on YouTube. Um, and uh, what started off as an initial um, want to start a channel around lifestyle and vlogging, um, I've since been kind of studying to try and find my niche. So mm -hmm. I really want to bring forth plus size fashion. I think a lot of that will come with some lifestyle vlogging, mm -hmm. uh, being able to you know kind of get a peek into my life but hopefully in this video we'll answer some questions that you have had um, personally and also you all may have in starting a YouTube channel so I guess what's the first one you have yeah. mm -hmm. um, so I guess my very first question what is the most important beginning point or the most important starting point to creating a YouTube channel I personally feel like getting an idea all together that being the name okay. so what you're gonna go by your brand so to speak go ahead and brand that across all social media in which you plan to use and then I highly encourage especially in making a video now doing an intro video mm. like a video that it's just kind of letting your viewers know who you are, what you're going to be covering. So as they come to the channel and you're building that content, they have an idea of what they can find on your page. And by an idea, I mean like, what do you want to focus on on your channel? So that somebody can say, I should subscribe to this person because blank. This person is a good resource for blank. And I know you shared an analogy um, of YouTube and channel and TV and, ah, and yes. so if you wouldn't mind just maybe sharing that because With I know that, that was yeah. really helpful. Um, and me just trying to understand the framework of YouTube. So one of the things that I kind of gave her the analogy of when it comes to YouTube is like, YouTube is like your cable network, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And your channel is like the VH1, the MTV of the cable network. So your channel is actually a TV channel, so to speak. And the ads, as you see them on the channel, are like the commercials that typically run when you're watching a TV show on these networks, except you are in control mm -hmm. of those ads in which you show. You know, minus the ones that play before or after or during the video, but the sponsored ads is what I mean. That's, so to speak, the analogy I gave it. And um, we've also talked about having an upload schedule. That's something I've even thought about bringing to the channel, brought it to the channel, took it away from the channel. But yeah, it's, it's a challenge to kind of like commit to a schedule, but I feel like it's good because it's kind of like, think about your favorite what? This is the thing that happens sometimes when you're making a video, but what I was trying to say was I feel like an upload schedule is good to have. Even though I'm working on getting one established myself, I feel like it's good because it's like, think about your favorite TV show and you make sure that you watch that TV show and if you don't watch it, you go back on your DVR service or whatever and you watch it when you have an upload schedule same thing it's like if i say i'm gonna put a video out every monday at eight if you really like what i'm talking about on mondays at eight you know if i have a certain type of video i'm gonna put out you're gonna make sure that you come back and you watch that and if you don't come back monday at eight you come back at some point during the week That's dvr so cool. and you watch that video so it's kind of like cable what are some ways that you can prioritize that upload schedule um, mm. and commit to that um, amidst all of the other priorities that we have going on. So to stay on track with uploads in your life, basically on my calendar, what I do is I go in and I write what videos I want to launch on certain days. And it also helps keep me in tra on track in terms of what I should be recording. So um, it helps keep not only um, you on task in terms of getting videos out on time, but it keeps you on task in terms of recording the correct thing 
at the correct time. And so basically on your calendar, and I might throw a little shot up of this, but just write out, even on a whiteboard, I have a whiteboard I even have to like double up on it to keep me going a little bit more where I know what videos I want to launch on what days. And it's like meeting your own personal goals. Really. This seems like a lot, right? Even mm -hmm. to kind of master content. And we haven't even begun to like scratch the surface of what it takes um, to produce a video. So I often watch, start a YouTube channel videos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Feel like I am hearing, oh, production doesn't matter. Focus on your content. But when I go and watch a video, right, I will stop watching a video if the quality or the production is not isn't there. there. What would you say the balance should be for content and production for new YouTubers? I don't know. I guess people say that because even myself, my first video <laughs> looks nothing like my videos today. They don't sound anything alike. They don't look anything alike like that. It's just like night and day because I did what I could with what I had. Okay. And I think that's why they say that, so okay. that you don't go out and make this huge investment financially in getting all this stuff and then you later realize it's not what you want. Well, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I want my videos to look like hers. I don't care if I'm just starting. <laughs> I totally get it. I told I was the same way. I had people that I looked at and wanted my videos to look like theirs, but like real talk, and I'm gonna try to probably fill up a little clip. My video was like me sitting at my dining room, my mother's dining room table. I had, I think, a book. I propped like a bed sheet on it, and I just set the camera in front of me and my hands in front of the camera, and that was my set. Like real talk, that was it. And then I went to the computer that hummed because it was like working so hard <laughs> to power through, what is it, iMovie I think I was using? I don't know why I'm laughing. And I had a microphone that could pick up the humming, it could pick up my voice, it picked up everything, but I worked with what I had, you know? And thankfully the investment has kind of paid off and like allowed me to get better gear and things like that so I can make better videos, but we all start from somewhere. So I think that's kind of where it comes from. They want you to focus on the message because that's what people ultimately care about. They like the production, it's nice, it's good to see. It's, it's eye candy, but they really come for your message, I feel. But it is hard to balance the two. Generally, one is gonna have to you know, go to the wayside. Either you focus on production and put out less content, or you focus on content and don't have as highly produced videos, mm -hmm. unless you have a team. You know, I don't want to sound discouraging, right? But mm -hmm. I'm realizing that there is a lot of work that goes into, you know, creating videos and yeah. content. Is YouTube worth the return on investment? Mm. I would say yes and no. Okay. Um, I feel like, I, th I think a lot of people see YouTubers sometimes, once they start to peak and they see the benefits and it's like, oh, you can make a living off of that. Oh, you can travel doing that. Oh, you can get these opportunities while still doing that. You know, it's, it, it looks tantalizing almost. And it is, but in terms of the return on the investment, I will say it takes a lot of effort and time and dedication. Like, that's why I always say you gotta be relentless with it. Relentless with anything that you want. Hence the shirts, link down below, get the merch. That is where the phrase relentless comes from because it is like the motto I had to take with YouTube. Like there are days that I just like wanted to quit, like real talk. I just got frustrated because I didn't see that return on investment. I felt like, God, I'm doing all this. I'm going to work. I'm coming home and I'm working again. And That's what it, like. it just felt endless. And I'm like, and then my channel just like, peaks a little bit, you know, but everybody's journey is different. Everybody has different opportunities at different milestones of their channel. Like there are channels that are smaller than mine that have opportunities that I wish that I could have. And of course channels that are larger, but when you start, it has to just be passion. You can't be in it for the money. You gotta be doing something. That's why they say do something you like, because you might not, you know, reach where you want to be, but you never know until you try. But don't give up ultimately, because there are days that I felt like it, but. If I did, I wouldn't be here, so. That's real. What, is you, what sets you apart from maybe other um, content creators out here on mm. YouTube? Um, I don't know. I know, personally, I just try to take a really down-to-earth approach with my videos. Still focus a little bit on production. But, you know, like, more so the way in talking to um, everyone out there, just kind of being chill with it. Also, like, just being real with you all, like, you don't see as many female tech reviewers, you don't see as many women of color, 
mm -hmm. um, doing this with tech focused channels. I'm not going to say that there aren't any out there that don't that do talk about tech. There are some out there that talk about tech, but it's not the primary focus of their channel. So I'll say I don't see a lot of me doing what I do on YouTube, especially when you compare the ratio against male tech reviewers. So, um, but so I think though that that all of the questions that I have are. And been asked, awesome. Right? For right now. For right now, right. <laughs> Starting this channel was opening Pandora's box. Yes, it is like that. Like I seriously studied YouTube like a freaking course. Yeah. Like I just was a sponge to information. Like I, I was all in it because it's a lot to learn. You are your own team, you know, especially unless you don't have one. Like you're the one writing the scripts. You're the one editing, getting the audio right, uh, promoting your brand. Like you are everything. everything. It's a lot. And a lot of people don't know what goes on behind the scenes. And then they start making a channel like, oh, so I've done this now. I got to learn about analytics. I got to care about numbers. So it's like, it's a lot involved, but it's not anything to discourage you. It's sure. just more so to be transparent. Like just be, be ready, be, be relentless, you know, stay relentless. Merch below. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to answer your questions in this video. So I do want to also get questions from you all as well. So please drop them down below. We're going to go down in the comment section and pull some of those questions for the next video. And um, yeah, occasionally I may talk with other content creators as well. So if this is something you like, please let me know. So yeah. Oh shoot. We got to go to cam. Are you on rolling? <laughs> the camera died again. So yeah, we're going to end it on this one. Um, you want to take them out with the outro? <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks for letting us take the time out to tech you out. Oh, hey. yes! Hey. We are out, y'all, to the next video. Bye. Bye.